Hey guys, um, I'm Jamie Kirkpatrick and I'm here to show you the first part of how Muskets and Rifles uh, plays. So Muskets and Rifles is a Napoleonic wargaming uh, rules that I've created and it's going to be available on Amazon. It's self-published and um, I'm excited to show you how this works. So Muskets and Rifles is aimed at brigade level games. So you're going to have about two, three or four brigades per side. Um, that's the sweet spot for the game. You can play larger or smaller games. It's up to you. So what I'm going to do is in this video, I'm just going to take you through the command phase and how it works because it's slightly different to um, other games in Napoleonic settings. So I'll take you through it and then there'll be other videos on how combat works. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so as you can see here, we have our brigade commander who is Picton. And in his brigade, he has this British attack column. He has a line, he has an artillery piece, and he has the Scots Greys. We have a commander on foot. His brigade includes the 95th Rifles, British line, and Hanoverians in attack column. And then finally, we have our general, Wellington, here. So, Picton is commanding his brigade. And the first part of the game is we roll for initiative. So, each player rolls one dice. Whoever gets the highest goes first. Pretty simple. So, let's say we've got the turn. Because we've got the, the initiative, we're going to roll 10 dice, 10 d6. And then those dice are going to be assigned to brigade commanders and then the brigade commanders can issue orders. So we're going to take 10d6 and roll the dice. Okay, so I rolled my 10 dice and this is the results I have. So each dice lets a brigade, brigade commander issue certain orders. So let's go through that. So a one is a rally dice. Now a commander can keep this to use in the rally phase because units take panic points in the game and you're going to want to rally them off. So that's what a one does. A two lets brigade commander issue a move order. So he could, Picton could say to the line, I'm issuing a move order with this two. A three lets a unit move and fire. So they can move one move segment and then fire. A four allows us to activate a skirmishing unit or light infantry, such as the 95th Rifles. And when they activate, they move and fire. They always get those actions. A five can be used to activate artillery or cavalry. If artillery activate, they get a fire action. If cavalry activate, they get one move segment. And cavalry normally move about eight inches. However, if cavalry are in range to charge, the five can be used to do a charge order. And then finally, a six can be issued to the army general. So we can give this to Wellington, and then the army general can order two units from any brigade if they're within 18 inches of him, and they can activate even if they've been activated again. So it's like a bonus activation. So in this example, we're gonna use the six on Wellington. So we issue that to Wellington. We now have to decide what brigade commanders are gonna activate. In this example, I've only got two. So Picton is gonna have the five, a three, a two, and a one. And then my other foot commander, it's going to have a four because he wants to activate the skirmishers because that's what four lets us do. He's going to use a three to activate um, an infantry unit to move and fire. He's now got a five, four and a six. These dice cannot be used. He doesn't have cavalry or artillery in his brigade. He's used a four already. There's no more skirmishing units in his brigade. And the six, you can only use one six to assign it to a general. So these dice are lost. Now, if you had more brigade commanders, 
you would have to really choose what um, orders they're going to issue. So not every commander is going to be able to activate because you have 10 D6 available to you. Now, the opposing player, when you roll your 10 D6, rolls 5 D6. Okay, so the opposing player at the same time when you roll your order dice, he's going to roll 5 D6. And any sixes he can use to deny orders. So let's just say we've rolled two sixes in that roll. He removes the other dice and keeps these to one side. Now, when a brigade commander issues an order, after stating what order he is issuing, the opposing player can use that six to announce I'm denying that order. Now this represents commanders having intel or the unit not you know interacting with their with their brigade commander but only three orders can be denied you can only use a th maximum of three sixes to, not, to deny orders and you really have to think about what orders you want to deny so let's start with picton picton has a five, so he can issue an order to the cavalry. So he's issuing an order to the Scots Greys. He announces it. The Scots Greys get to move eight inches. So just for this example, we'll just move them up. So they've moved. And the opposing player did not want to deny that order. Now he could have used the five to fire the artillery, but he chose not to. So this order dice is now removed. Picton is now issuing an order on the three to move the line infantry, one move and fire, because that's what the three lets us do. However, the opposing player now states, I'm denying that order. He removes that six and Picton can't issue this order. Frustrating for the player, but the order's been denied. So Picton's got a two and a one left, so he's going to use the two to activate the attack column to move because a two only allows movement. So the attack column can go six inches plus D6. So they would go six, they would go 12 in total. But if you're in attack column or march column, you cannot change formation in the same turn. However, if you're in line, you can change formation. If they wanted to change formation, it would take them a whole turn. So they could pick and could assign the two to change formation. So they would move up, just for example, so they've moved up here. He's now got the one and he's going to save that because the rally phase is the last part of the turn. We would then move over to this brigade commander. He would issue an order to the skirmishers. The skirmishers move, they move six plus D6, they move and then they would get to open fire. Now we're not gonna look at firing in this video, we're just looking at command. So they've done their action, um, and then a three on the line infantry to move and fire. However, the opposing player uses his last six to deny that order. So you can see not everything is going to activate, but if the opposing player doesn't roll any sixes, then you're gonna be able to issue all the orders that you have. Finally, Wellington, he has two orders he can issue and he's going to issue his first order to the cavalry. They've already been activated, but the because it's from the general, it acts as a bonus activation. So they're going to move again, they would move their eight. And if they were in range of a unit to charge, they could attempt to charge on 2d6. Wellington would now use his last activation to activate the cannon. The cannon would fire and that would be the end of the order phase. So all orders are issued and actions are carried out as they're ordered. So we don't issue orders and then go to a fire phase, etc. It happens as you issue the order. So when I issue an order to a, a unit to move and fire, they move and then they fire. So everything happens 
in the order phase, if that makes sense. And that is the basics of, of how it works. Now, if we get round to the rally phase, this dice, the one, can be used to rally a unit. Let's say this unit has five panic points on them. Picton has one rally dice. We can roll it. On a four plus, we remove one panic point. We rolled a three, we didn't. But if Picton had saved three ones, let's say he rolled three ones and we assigned them to him, he gets to roll three dice to try and rally off panic points. And he's rolled one five, so that would reduce that down to four. Now, that's important because when units get to their max panic point, they're gonna test and they could flee, which is bad, you don't want that happening. So, that is the basics of commanding your forces. You roll your dice, you issue, the, uh, sorry, you select what dice you want to assign to your brigade commanders, and then the brigade commanders issue orders to units. And just briefly, we'll go over it again. A one is a rally, a two is a movement for infantry, a three, is a move and fire for infantry. A four is for skirmishers or light infantry to move and fire. A five is for cavalry to move or charge and for artillery to fire. And a six can be issued to um, the main general in the army, but only one six can be used. And that's the basics of command. So in the next video, we're going to look at firing and the casualty phase. So thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.